my name is Bob DeFord. I'm from Prescott, Arizona, and I brought a home-built, full-scale Mark 9 Spitfire. You know, a real one now is two million bucks, and I don't want a real one. And I thought, I'm gonna build one. I've done, uh, you know, mechanicing and stuff all my life. I love to do it. But to build a Spitfire, I found a guy that can do anything, and we built it. And we didn't know if we could, you know, we had the plans, and. Let's go, you know, and we just started and we'd stand back. We didn't never consult with the computer. We went, burn, that looks good. I'm always impressed when people have ideas and they do something. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. It's a real airplane. It's got pistons. It makes noise. It probably leaks a little oil. It's fast. It looks cool. I like it. So you got a wooden wing, a wooden tail, and a tubular fuselage with metal skin. Very, very simple, simple to build. I mean, you know, not, I didn't know anything about wood and now I'm an expert. I still don't know anything about it. And firewall forward was up to us. This engine and mount has a thin piece of car tire rubber separating the engine from the mount, just so it doesn't chafen. So the engine is bolted to this airplane. When it idles about 500 RPM, it rocks the wings like, I mean, three, two feet either way. And because there is no shock absorbers where most engines have engine rubbers and things like that. So that's very cool. When I love to pull it back and let it rock because it's just a monster. It's like, let me add it. You know. I wanted an Allison engine because it, for one thing, all my wrenches fit it. Uh, it's an American engine and I bought them pretty cheap from a guy in Kansas that had a whole bunch of them. And he sold me, a, he gave me a heck of a deal. And then later on, he says, I sold those to you too cheap. And I said, I know you did, and I'm not giving you any more. But I couldn't find a Curtis Electric. All Allison's had Curtis Electrics, P38s, P40s. Expensive, out of, you know, $100,000, $200,000. So a DC3 prop, perfect. I bought it brand new in a box for $3,000. Paid $3,500 to have it overhauled. The only thing about this, it's so big, that in level flight, there's two inches of clearance before it hits the ground. So my Allison guy says, oh, you got to cut that prop off before you're going to get it. Well, it's only 330 hours I haven't got it yet, and I'm not going to get it. It's a, a one-piece, 36-foot, 10-inch wing, one piece, and you laminate these bar planks. They're three-quarters of an inch thick, uh, six inches wide. Douglas fir, the most beautiful stuff you ever saw. I was two or three years old in my sandbox in Bakersfield and four P-38s pitched over my house right on the deck and scared the heck out of me, but it just, in my heart. So I've always wanted to do this. This is the only thing I ever want to do is fly World War II stuff. When you get in this thing and it starts going, when you look over the side and the ground is going by fast, you think, I'm, I'm in a machine here. I'm, and we put these guns on about three months ago and just to look out at those guns, I'm just going, you, you just kind of, I'm overwhelmed. You look at this big elliptical wing when you're flying, you just lay it up on a wing. And I mean, it's just such a dream to fly and you drop the nose down and it just starts picking up speed and you know you're up to 300 miles an hour before you know it and you go oh my god and then in a loop it just goes over and as you come out the bottom you go boom and you hit the wake which is kind of a perfect loop and it does just a nice round loop i noticed one time looking at pictures of spitfires or cruise along and it's always like they're always like this i don't know why but they're just up a little you can see the difference the deflection well i'm flying along and i'm looking at my malcolm hood and i go God, it's just, it looks exactly like that. And I go, I did it. You know, it was fun. To sit in it, it's like a time warp. And looking through the gun side, you've got the top right there, and it's just amazing. Building an airplane is not easy, and so to take a World War II aircraft fighter and say, you know, I'm gonna put this one together, and I mean, these parts don't exist anymore. No one's making them, so you're doing it all from scratch. I think that's probably the most amazing piece Aside from the elliptical wing. <laughs> Vern and I are having coffee in Sisters, Oregon. And we're, I'm saying, Vern, we got to have a rear rear mirror. All Spitfires have rear rear mirrors. And we're going, rear rear mirror. And you, you could buy one for 300 bucks, 400 bucks. 
So we're walking down the street and we walk by this kitchen implement shop and there's all these ladles and stuff hanging in there and we go in there and Bernie looks around and says, get that. So we take this thing off the wall, it's got a light, you know, a handle on it and everything. And we're holding it looking going, it. Now we gotta go to Napa and find a mirror that will fit in it. So we go to Napa, we find this mirror, it just falls in like it was built for it. He says, let's go. We go back to the shop, cuts the handle off, builds this little stanchion. We screw the mirror in. That's it. 12 bucks. And I love it. It's round. It's perfect. I've never seen any Falk Wolves in it, but I'm looking. I'm not a millionaire, I, I, but I got enough. I got enough to do it. And most people do it, you know, it, when you're retired and when you're, you know, you're in your uh, older years, you can do something like this. And all you got to do is want it. I mean, I couldn't wait. And I thought, when I'm done with my home build, it's going to be exactly what I want. This is what the EA is all about.